The Dreyfus affair might have been a relatively straightforward case of detecting the actions and identity of a spy among French military authorities and convicting him, but it developed into a hugely complex, influential and divisive event that started in 1894 and continued until 1906. I shall attempt to provide a cursory synopsis of what it was about before discussing, briefly, three films on the subject and then offering my own thoughts on these events and, as I see it, their correlation with the Enlightenment movement. Having discovered in 1894 the existence of a spy stroke informer in their midst, responsible for the sale of sensitive information to the German Empire, the high command of the French army sought to act rapidly and quietly in identifying the culprit in order to avoid embarrassment and any loss of confidence among the French people. As a result of this pressure, a lack of professionalism and cultural and personal prejudice against Jews, Jewish officer Alfred Dreyfus was quickly accused and convicted of high treason. Those in authority were sure they had their man, but his conviction was the result of scant and insubstantial investigation and evidence, combined with dubious courtroom proceedings. The situation was aggravated and misdeeds compounded when the newly appointed head of military intelligence, Colonel Georges Picard, gathered evidence that pointed to a different suspect, and therefore cast doubt on the conviction of Dreyfus. But this was refuted and rejected by those who now sought to protect the army's reputation and status, as well as their own. However, Picard's belief in truth and justice was such that he could not allow the innocent Dreyfus to be sacrificed for the sake of the army's standing, and he, along with a number of like-minded luminaries, including Emil Zola, persisted in pursuing the case, leading to pain, challenge and conflict for all concerned, indeed virtually the entire nation, until Dreyfus was exonerated and reinstated in the army in 1906. I first became acquainted with the Dreyfus affair when I heard reference made to Dreyfus in the film Papillon in 1973. I read a couple of articles which gave me a rudimentary knowledge of events and issues, but it was only when I saw Prisoner of Honour several years later and considered using it as an element of a study course with pupils that I realised the depth and scope of the issues raised and I connected these events to the principles of the Enlightenment movement, at least in my mind. Since then, I have done some further research and watched two more films on the subject, I Accuse, made in 1958 by José Ferrer, and J'accuse, or An Officer and a Spy, made by Roman Polanski in 2019. Each film, and I include Prisoner of Honour, made by Ken Russell in 1991, has much to recommend it, and all three reveal similar reasons for the miscarriage of justice at the hub of the affair. I Accuse and Prisoner of Honour both establish Major Ferdinand Esterhazy as the true spy from the start, and thus arouse indignation at the ill-founded arrest of Alfred Dreyfus. The unveiling of evidence against Esterhazy and in favour of Dreyfus's innocence is told with an almost journalistic distance, as if offering historical observation. Both are highly engaging and offer understanding depictions of all the characters and their motivations, even those responsible for Dreyfus's incarceration, though there is never any doubt regarding the injustice they are doing to Dreyfus. J'accuse, or An Officer and a Spy, is more of a detective thriller as we follow the trail Picard pursues and we share his doubts, questions and frustrations regarding the case against Dreyfus and the authorities' refusal to recognise the injustice that had been done. We also share the consequences for Picard as he puts truth, justice and professionalism above orders and career. Sombre and intensely realistic, J'accuse offers an authentic, clear-minded and involving account of events. It seems to me that this affair is a tale of incompetence and a lack of professionalism, fuelled by anti-Semitism on the part of complacent and self-satisfied authorities consumed by position and pride rather than responsibility and accountability. The case was eventually won by an insistence on the burden of proof and the principle of accountability, as opposed to faith in the judgment of the elite who governed. This was a clear, if convoluted and lengthy, victory for advocates of the principles of the Enlightenment movement of the 18th century, the repercussions of which spread and reverberated throughout 19th century society and politics. Very roughly, the Enlightenment movement questioned the necessary existence of God and God-given morality, and therefore challenged the basis of authority of those who governed with a mix of political and religious power at that time. Decisions and judgments were to be based on the concepts of reason, justice and equality, as opposed to personal or religious conviction or commercial advantage, 
and this movement may be said to have influenced events such as the Mutiny on the Bounty, the French Revolution, and the general move toward democracy and accountability in the 19th century. To me, the Dreyfus Affair does much to encapsulate what the Enlightenment was all about. The authorities wished to maintain the façade of the infallibility of the hierarchy, requiring faith in the unchallenged judgment of the governing elite, principally to maintain the trust and confidence of the people. However, the trust and the confidence of the people are likely to be eroded by inattention to fairness, justice and truth, as, if these values are denied to any one individual in a society, they may be denied to all. The state is the totality of the individuals who form it. If one such individual is sacrificed unjustly for the benefit of the state or its image, this damages the very foundations of a state whose purpose is to protect, defend and nurture its component parts. Such a principle should not be sacrificed to self-protection, ambition and greed. Pride should be derived not from position and authority, but from the way society treats its individual members. In the case of the Dreyfus Affair, recognition of the existence of objective truth was resisted in favour of a stance that supported particular political and social viewpoints and ambitions. It is, perhaps, a sad reflection on these modern times and human nature that some of today's politicians and so-called community leaders and their followers persist in denying truth and facts, preferring to promote their own distorted and inaccurate versions of events to advance their own ideology and ambitions. My thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you find it of some value.